duty hatch. So um, anyway, the uh, yeah, so they're not quite sure what's going to happen. It could be rain and a couple inches of snow. It might be a little bit more than that. We don't know, but it looks like it's going to be a nasty day here Friday and into uh, into Saturday. At some point, uh, it's going to transform from rain to snow, and the the weathermen are just like, which one's it going to be? So we, they don't know yet. But what it is, is I think that it's throwing everybody into a panic and saying, oh my God, I just got to, I got to drop another, well, it caused me to panic saying I got one less day now because I'm going to have a bad weather day that I got to deal with. So we'll see what happens. Hi, Kevin and Chris Vaughn. Good to see you. All right. So we are here and uh, just a, such a busy week. So much going on. I know our giving tree and um, mitten tree, got folks working on that and, uh, And uh, so uh, lots of other stuff going on. Of course, we have our food pantry that is just so, so busy uh, and uh, helping people. So if you're feeling bad about yourself, come by the church and see some of God's work being done, right? And you get lifted right up. So uh, I actually got a little bit. I did two things yesterday before we, I got a little bit of time. So I did two things that were unique for me. Hey, Aunt Mary, how are you? Janet Lyons. Um, so the first thing was it was a Monday. <clears throat> so during the summertime, I take Fridays and Saturdays off because I go up, you know, the cottage. And then, but during the wintertime, the non-cottage seasons, <clears throat> a lot of times I'll work, I'll work some on Fridays. Um, and um, so... I found that I take, like to take Monday off or take a lighter day on Monday just to recover a little bit. And I'm pushing through. I've been pushing through the last couple of weeks. And then yesterday, I was just like, I'm tired. So I went home. I actually took a two-hour nap in the afternoon. It just amazed me, amazed my wife, just because uh, I've not been able to nap of recent times. So, um, yeah, so I'm a little bit refreshed. That's good. I need that because we need our strength getting in here into this Christmas marathon as we do that hi helen england merry christmas to you and uh hi linda wolf so that's kind of what's going on with me so that was the the two things that was oh and the other the second thing was i actually went to a mall i went to a mall and i didn't i you know what i didn't miss anything i walked around that whole mall and i got a couple things that i needed but uh for the most part i'm like Man, there's just nothing here for me right okay all right. Yes, naps are very good. I used to be able to nap quite easily and often. Not so much in the last year. Anyway, here we go. So it is 9.02. We're going to keep going on. So the biggest news here is Christmas, right? Christmas Eve. Um, well, we've got our play. The, the preschool is having their play, their Christmas pageant. That'll be on Thursday. And I think I heard 10.30 and 2.00. And then again on Friday, because they have another class on Friday morning, that will be at 1030. Um, and then um, office will be closed on, uh, although we'll have some people around, but the office will be closed on Friday because of the Christmas Eve and Christmas falling on the weekend. And uh, Christmas Eve is on Saturday. So 530, 730 and 10 p.m. Come on by. Lots of planning, lots of music, lots of joy. Um, we will... Um, have communion at the 10 o'clock. Uh, they'll have we'll have glow sticks for the kids. The 5:30 is a kids-oriented service, so we'll have the glow sticks. And then the the 7:30 is more is a mixed, but we're doing glow sticks there too because we might have some young ones. And then we'll have candles at the 10 p.m. So lots of stuff going on. So uh, welcome. Hi, Ellen. Good to see you. So that's that's the big news, right? And uh, I'll be here. Um, and then uh, Friday, since we are closed, and I don't believe that there's a good news, right, Carrie, for this Friday. And then we have next week, which is between Christmas and New Year's, and I think we're going to take a break. I think we're going to take a break from uh, morning devotions, um, just to just to take the pause, right? But we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Let's move on into our devotions today, because we have God's word for us. That's always there. 
and uh, we just have to make room for it. So in order to do that, I'm going to do my breathing exercise. I breathe in for five, hold it for five, and then exhale for five. And if you'd like to participate with me, I'd welcome you into that. Here we go. Come, Lord Jesus. All right. Our first reading for devotion is Psalm 33. So let's listen for the word of the Lord for us today. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Praise the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and all their hosts by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea as in a bottle. He puts the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord stands forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Happy is the nations whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all humankind. From where he sits enthroned, he watches all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all their deeds. A king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a vain hope for victory, and by its great might it cannot save. Truly, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and shield. Our heart is glad in him, because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. Isn't that a beautiful psalm? Just, it's just so inclusive of, of everything about God and, and our relationship with God and God's intent and will in the world. If you notice here, I always tell people one of the ways that we can read Scripture, uh, especially when we're together, like we're here, is we hear it, you know. Uh, and, and sometimes we encourage people, shut your eyes. And then as this, these words flow through you, what's two things? What's the what's the what's the thing that sticks in your mind the most out of it, you know? And then and also, how does it make you feel? You know, does it comfort you? Does it give you angst? Uh, does it does it uh, make you cautious? Does it make you grateful? Just um, to be in touch with those things. And um, I know as we went through here, the thing that that strikes me quite often with this psalm is it talks about the power of God and what God is working and how the nations, right, uh, that that they're nothing and compare it to God. And, and God has an intent for his creation. The nations can step in and say, well, we're going to do this. But God says, no, I'm going to do it this way. But then it also shows the hope of the world and how militaristic it is, right? It talks about the king and his armies and the valiant warriors and the war horses. And he, God says, you know, do all those things that you want to, but you're not going to stand in the way of my will, in the way that I want my creation. Okay. And uh, we're reading in Isaiah this week, which is just wonderful. And, uh, I was able to talk with Don Jones yesterday and give him some commentaries on Isaiah because it's just so chock full of everything. But this is in the 28th chapter. And before I read it, I just want to say that we're, uh, Isaiah can be kind of broken into three different books. Um, probably attributable to different authors at different times because there's enough of the syntax change that we say there's something going on here. But it doesn't change that it's the truth and it's from God, right? But we think that this is still um, in this what we call proto-Isaiah, which means first. 
and um, but it's getting towards the end of it, right? And so this is still condemnation of the nation about what they're doing wrong uh, versus the exile, which is in the middle part. And then the recovery, the return to Israel, which is in the third part of Isaiah. And you can see that that in like chapter 42 through 45 is when there's really a change uh, in, in uh, what's saying. It goes from a condemning uh, words to one of hope and forgiveness. And that's what we're barreling towards in Christmas, right? We're barreling towards hope and forgiveness. All right. Let's read from Isaiah 28, verses 9 through 22. Whom will he teach knowledge? And to whom will he explain the message? Those who are weaned from milk, those taken from the breast? For it is precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Truly with stammering lip and with alien tongue, he will speak to this people to whom he has said, this is rest, give rest to the weary, and this is repose, yet they will not hear. Therefore, the word of the Lord will be to them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little, in order that they may go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Therefore, hear the word of the Lord, you scoffers, whose rule, who, who rule this people in Jerusalem. Because you have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with Sheol we have an agreement. When the overwhelming scor scourge passes through, it will not come to us. For we have made, li made lies our refuge, and in falsehood we have taken shelter. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, see, I am laying in Zion a foundation stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. One who trusts will not panic, and I will make justice the line, and righteousness the plummet. Hail will sweep away the refuge of lies, and waters will overwhelm the shelter. Then your covenant with death will be annulled, and your agreement with Sheol will not stand. When the overwhelming scourge passes through, you will be beaten down by it. As often as it passes through, it will take you. For morning by morning it will pass through, by day and by night, and it will be sheer terror to understand the message. For the bed is too short to stretch oneself on it, and the covering too narrow to wrap oneself in it. For the Lord will rise up as on Mount Perizim. He will rage as in the valley of the Gibeon. To do his deed, strange his deed, and to work his work, alien is his work. Now therefore do not scoff, or your bonds will be made stronger, for I have heard a decree of destruction from the Lord God of hosts upon the whole land. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. Can you notice the difference just in writing styles from what we were just even reading yesterday to this? So, um, and but we can see here that this is, this is um, a proclamation against the leaders of of uh, Judah, right? And it talks about the, the, the agreements that they made with death and everything. That's their suzerainty treaty that they made with Assyria, which prevents them from invading them, but Syria, uh, Assyria is just using it to get in closer to understand uh, that, and, and they're eventually going to come and overwhelm it. But here's God saying, look, these things are happening. If you're going to trust in your agreements and arrangements and everything, know that I'm stronger than that. And uh, I'm even going to purge that. And I think that this warning is clearly to the people, right, saying, you, your leaders have led you into this, right? Don't keep holding, don't keep hiding in your lies. Um, I'm, I'm exposing it. So then stand up to it because, and if you're in the know, when the scourge comes, right, um, then you'll be better off for it. Okay. So that we're going to finish. Uh, we're going to go up to uh, we're in Revel Revelation again. Ugh. God's got something for us here. Revelation 20, verse 11, all the way up into 21, 8. So um, John the Revelator, right, is talking about this. I mean, the whole book is this vision of how God 
is going to redeem uh, and create justice or deliver justice. Um, so he, we see a lot of visionary stuff, and this is a visionary thing about what what does he see? What does John the Revelator sees when he's exposed to heaven? So let's uh, let's listen for the word of the Lord here. Then I saw a great white throne, and the one who sat on it. The earth and the heaven fled from his presence, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Also another book was opened, the book of life, and the dead were judged according to their works as recorded in the books. And the sea gave up the dead that were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them, and all were judged according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire, and anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was th thrown into the lake of fire. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the waters of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things. And I will be their God, and they will be my children. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the polluted, the murderers, the fornicators, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. So um, this is the accumulation of God's um, recreation. Um, it talks about how the separateness that's, that exists between the sacred and the, the mortal or the carnal uh, disappears, right? And it talks about the second death. Well, that's, this is the resurrection of the dead, right? And, uh, but it says that there's still a judgment. And I think that's, that's something that gives us great pause but that we think about. This book of life, right, um, uh, a Jewish, uh, when somebody passes, right, it's common uh, among people of Jewish faith to say, uh, ask for God's blessing, right, on the person and their family, and then they finish it, and may their name be written in the book of life. So, um, like we'd sometimes just say, you know, God rest their soul, but may their name be written in the book of life. Because it says here that if it's there, you got an easier time of it coming up. Uh, and there's been a lot of academic thought and discussion saying, what does this mean? Um, um, what should we get into? Who's going to be saved and who's not? What's going to happen? God's got that in hand. I don't know. I just know that if you've been exposed to God's word and you've opened yourself to the Holy Spirit and God's in your life, you don't need to worry about that other part of it, right? Too much. All right. Let's move on to gospel. We're in Luke today. Uh, and uh, it's Luke 1, verses 5 through 25. So let's see what God has in stock, stock, store for us reading this one. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were getting on in years. Once, when he was serving as priest before God and his section was on duty, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and offer incense. Now at the time of the <clears throat> incense offering, 
the whole assembly of the people were praying outside. And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified, and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and he, you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the, peop the people of Israel to the Lord, their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, well, he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, How will I know that this is so? For I am an old man, and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be filled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak until the day these things occur. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondered at his delay in the sanctuary. When he did not come out, he could not speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He kept motioning to them and remained unable to speak. When the time of service was ended, he went to his home. After those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she remained in seclusion. She said, This is what the Lord has done for me when he looked favorably on me and took away the disgrace I have endured among my people. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. So the narrative of the birth of John the Baptist, or the conception of John the Baptist, it's really neat, isn't it? We see another angel. We talked about angels on Sundays. This is the angel Gabriel. We had Michael that comes down and speaks also. Uh, so we call them archangels, head angels. And, uh, but again, um, isn't there a commonality in when we look at God's action in the world? And, and there's a couple things that run through. And one of these is um, uh, the gift of a child to people who were barren, either because they couldn't conceive or, the, or of their age, right? And so God moving in there. And so um, there we go. We see it with Abraham and Isaac and Sarah. And uh, we see it here with Elizabeth and her husband, Zechariah, who was a priest. Kind of, the thing that we need to understand about the temple is that it was kind of think, think about buildings within buildings within buildings. Right? That's how the temple was. And this Holy of Holies was only, you were, a priests were the only ones that could go in there. And they would go in there and light incense and come out. And uh, This is where God lived. So Zechariah goes in there and uh, is struck deaf. Oh, well, struck uh, dumb. I'm sorry. When I, that's a bad way to put it. He just can't speak, right? And uh, But he also is told who is this son that Elizabeth will bear, and who, what he will be, and what he will do, and he doubts it. He says, "My, I'm I'm old, and my wife is well on too." So, well, because you doubt it, we're going to strike you speechless. But when the time comes, when this prophecy is fulfilled, he will speak, and that's what we do. We see that later on. Okay, let's go back over here. See what we got. Hi, Barbara. Shoot. Yes, thank you, Don. Hi, John. Oh, well, thank you. That's very kind of you guys. Give me a break, huh? We'll see. Oh, oh Helen's got, got to leave for an appointment. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all. That's our plan. We'll follow that through. So, uh, um, um, we are, let's see. So, when we pray here, um, I know a lot of people are probably concerned and know about um, 
uh, Judy Martin. So she got through her surgery, another hernia repair surgery, and uh, she got through okay. We haven't heard today, so we're con consistently following up on that. And she's going to be in the hospital for several days recovering from that. So, but we're thankful that uh, that she was able to get treatment. And uh, and there's a lot of other people that are ill. There's a lot of illness going around. I know I'm trying to be careful. So if you see me with my mask on, it's just because I'm trying to stay healthy before Christmas Eve and Christmas, right? I can get sick after those days, but I can't be sick for Christmas Eve. So anyway, uh, we're all taking precautions. So, but I hope you do too. And uh, with this new weather forecast, if you're traveling or potentially traveling, I do, again, we pray for traveling mercies for all. Here we go. Are you ready to pray? 20, I see 26 devices on. That's just awesome. So good. Thank you for joining us today. I hope that it's a good way for you to start your day. And we have people that will join us uh, on our recorded version throughout it. And we welcome you too. And those that watch the end of the day to finish out their day, we hope that this has been, uh, I want to say that this, is, this has been life fulfilling for you to participate with us here today. All right, let's pray before we get on with our day. Lord, let this busyness of the season pass us over so that we can take the time and that we can uh, we can just soak in your world. We can understand that what we're doing and the preparations that we're doing are all in celebration of what you've done for us, for the delivery of our salvation and the baby Jesus. And as we've read through these uh, the scriptures today, we've seen that you have been at work for, uh, in this world from the from even before existence. So, Lord, uh, we bow to your sovereign how sovereign you are we also uh, just eagerly await uh, the holy spirit continuing to prod us and poke us push us forward form us into a better vision of what we're supposed to be and lord uh, one of the things that we do is we have empathy and compassion for those who are who are uh, suffering we pray for those who don't have a home we pray for those who are hungry Lord, move us so that we might be able to help people in these situations. And uh, we see your activity in this work and the, the, our deacons being the hands of Christ uh, as they gather here today and they make preparations for all of the families that we're going to help before this Christmas. And we lift up those who are ill, especially we want to lift up Judy Martin and pray that she will uh, recover quickly and, uh, and she'll return to full health. And the many, many others that we know are in similar situations. But Lord, the uh, biggest thing we come to you today is with thankfulness. Thankfulness for this season. Thankfulness that we live and are privileged and blessed enough that we can take these pauses. And Lord, that, uh, that our safety, uh, that our tomorrows uh, are going to be there. We ask all of this in your name. Amen. God bless you all. I love you. God loves you. And uh, so do we all here at Allen Park Presbyterian Church. Looking forward to seeing you guys tomorrow at 9 a.m. as we get here for the Wednesday before Christmas. And we'll talk to you later. God bless you all. Have a great day in the Lord. Bye-bye.